Welcome to Countat. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the nominal interest rate. We're going to explain what it is and we're going to go through some examples where we calculate the nominal interest rate. So we'll show the formula and we'll calculate the nominal interest rate. So we'll go from effective interest rate to nominal interest rate and we also go from nominal interest rate to different compounding to nominal interest rate with another compounding. So you should be able to understand the nominal interest rate very well in this lesson. In our previous lesson, we looked at the effective interest rate versus the nominal interest rate. We explained exactly how they work and what the effective interest rate is. And we also showed how to calculate the effective interest rate. So if you'd like to check that one out, you'll find the link in the description below, which will make your understanding of these two interest rates much better. So what is the nominal interest rate? This is a rate that does not take compounding into account. It is also known as stated interest rate or annual percentage rate. It is stated as a simple interest. So it does not take compounding into account. When you are given the nominal interest rate, that is not the real interest rate that you are actually paying. That is why we usually calculate the effective interest rate to see what the actual rate we are paying in a given period or in a year. But with the nominal interest rate, it's a simple interest which has not taken into account the compounding of interest that you'll be paying. If the interest rate is compounded annually, the nominal interest rate and the effective interest rate will be the same. And that's what we explained in the lesson I just alluded to. If it's compounded annually, if the interest rate is compounded annually, then the nominal interest rate and the effective are the same. If the interest rate is compounded more than once per year, maybe semi-annually or quarterly or monthly, the effective interest rate is higher than the nominal interest rate. So the effective interest rate will always be higher than the nominal interest rate. And just as we have mentioned about the compounding, the effective interest rate takes into account compounding. So that is why it's going to be higher to show you the actual interest rate you're actually paying. So that is what you need to understand. Remember, the effective will always be higher than your nominal. So when you do your calculation, when you're given effective and you have to calculate your nominal interest rate, always know that the answer you are expecting to get is lower than that effective interest rate. The payments period must coincide with the interest compounding. If it does not, convert the interest rate to match the payment period. So this is when you're doing the calculations where you're given the payments and you're also given the nominal interest rate, for instance, with different compounding. Let's say the payments occur annually and your interest compounding occurs monthly. You will need to convert the interest rate to match the payment compounding. Okay, I hope it has made sense and we've done a lesson on that as well where we looked at the future value of an ordinary annuity and many other lessons when the payments do not coincide with the interest compounding. So you'll see how we compute that one but you'll also see it here how we do it when we are going from nominal to nominal with different compoundings. So what is the formula for the nominal interest rate? Well here it is. The formula is M times the sum of 1 plus i to the power of 1 divided by m minus 1. What do these stand for? The i is the effective interest rate. Always remember that when you're calculating the nominal interest rate, your i here will be the effective interest rate that you'll be given. The m is the number of compounding per period. So that is the m that you see here in the formula. And it will make sense as we go through the example. So that is the formula. It's very simple for the nominal interest rate. So now let's look at some examples of calculating the nominal interest rate. The first one says, what is the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly if the effective interest rate is 9%? What is the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly if the effective interest rate is 9%? Remember, the effective is 9%. And remember, like we said in our initial slide or in our first slide, that the effective interest rate is always higher than our nominal interest rate. So before we even calculate it, we know that our nominal interest rate or our answer will be lower than 9%. If you get something higher than 9%, you know you've done something wrong somewhere. So how do we calculate this? Well, let's bring back our formula. The nominal interest rate is M, which stands for the number of compounding. And what do we want here? We are asked, what is the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly? So the M here will be 4, and then we we'll multiply that by the sum of everything you see here in red. So it's one plus I, what is the I there? I is the effective interest rate of 9%. And remember, when we are doing calculations like this, we like to put our interest rate as a decimal. So 9%, for you to get the decimal, just take nine divided by 100, it will give you 0 0.09, okay? So I hope you are following along. 
the m is the four and then the i here obviously the one is the one the i here is the 0 0.09 and then you raise that to the power of one divided by m what is the m it's the four again because it's compounded quarterly and then we get the answer for this one's here and then once we have the answer we minus one and then once we have the answer we take that answer and we just multiply it by the m which is the four and here is how it's going to look the nominal interest rate is the four which is because it's compounded quarterly times one plus 0 0.09 which is the nine percent to the power of one divided by the number of compounding which is four and then minus one and what answer does it give us remember it has to be lower than nine percent it gives us 0 0.087 so if your calculator gives you 0 0.087 just multiply that by 100 and it will give you 8.71 percent that is the nominal interest rate remember the 0 0.087 is the decimal for the percentage which means 8.71 percent that is the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly when the effective interest rate is nine percent and you can see it's lower than the nine percent it's 8.71 percent now if yours is slightly different then it's just the rounding of difference okay but not a big difference it can be different by maybe seven you're getting a seven if you're getting a seven then you've done something wrong somewhere or you're getting 8.5 percent for instance that is a big difference mm -hmm. so you want to be maybe 8.70 or 8.72 but that is how you calculate the nominal interest rate you can see how easy it is let's go to the second example and what i want you to do here as we are in this example we are asked what is the nominal interest rate compounded monthly if the effective interest rate is 13 percent what i want you to do pause the video here and attempt it by yourself that is how you gauge if you understand any topic that we do and that is what we always encourage our students to do you pause there and you attempt the question and then you can continue and compare it with mine okay i hope you have attempted the question let me bring up the formula here we are given the formula which is the m remember the m is the number of compounding and how many compoundings is it per period well we asked what is the nominal interest rate compounded monthly we have 12 months in a year that means that it's 12 compoundings so m is the 12 and then we multiply that by one plus what is it 13 percent in decimal form it's 0 0.13 and then we raise that to the power of one divided by 12 remember that and then we minus one and then we will have our answer so we'll start with this in brackets here and then we multiply it finally by the m outside and what will it look like when we plug them into the formula there we have it 12 times 1 plus 0 0.13 to the power of 1 divided by 12 and then minus 1 and what answer does it give us it gives us 0 0.1228 now if your formula is only set to two decimal places you will just get 0 0.12 but if you multiply it by 100 you should get your answer which is 12.28 percent okay so remember if yours is off it should be off by a fraction of what mine is yours might be 12.23 or 12.24 percent but you have to be as close to the answer as possible because you want to get as accurate an answer as you can and that is why when you are doing your calculation that you have here in the formula you don't round off a lot you try and put in as many digits as you can when you're plugging them in that is how you'll get as close an answer to the accurate answer so the answer is 12.28 percent again you notice that the effective interest rate is 13 percent and our nominal interest rate is 12.28 percent which is less than the effective interest rate so that gives us an indication that we have done the correct thing but that may not always be the case so you always want to double check your answer because someone else might get 11 percent and think ah it's lower than the effective interest rate i'm correct always double check your answer now let's do a third example which students usually battle with but it's not that difficult look at this one here we are asked what is the nominal interest rate compounded monthly if you are charged 10.5 percent compounded quarterly what do you notice about this one here we are not given the effective interest rate okay so if remember with the other examples we were given the effective interest rate it was easier for us to just go from effective interest rate to the nominal interest rate with the compounding that we are asked to calculate but here we are given the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly so this 10.5 percent is nominal interest rate compounded quarterly but what do they want they want the nominal interest rate compounded monthly so how do we do this now what you can see here we're moving from a nominal interest rate to a nominal interest rate well here's a very important tip that you should remember 
when changing from nominal to nominal with different compounding. First, compute the effective interest rate, then back to the required nominal interest rate. What are we saying there? We are given the nominal interest rate of 10.5% compounded quarterly. So we need to calculate first the effective interest rate or the actual or the real interest rate. And then once we have gotten that one, we will calculate now the nominal interest rate compounded monthly. You can't go from nominal interest rate compounded quarterly straight to nominal interest rate compounded monthly. You first have to calculate the effective interest rate and then you now do it the exact same way we've been doing the other examples. Now, what you'll need here is the effective interest rate formula. So here is the effective interest rate formula. Now, if you looked at the other lesson I alluded to at the very beginning, you should remember this formula here. The effective interest rate is 1 plus R divided by M to the power of M minus 1. What do these stand for? Again, 1 is obviously 1 plus R. R is the nominal interest rate. That's why I put it as R and not I. So R is the nominal interest rate. And then we divide that by the number of compounding per period. And in this case, we will be taking the quarterly. Okay, because we are going from the quarterly to the effective first. So 1 plus R. R is the 10.5%. If I put it as a decimal, it's 0 0.105. And then I divide that by M, which is quarterly, so it's 4. So it's 0 0.105 divided by 4, and then calculate whatever is in brackets, and then we raise it to the power of M, which is the number of compounding, which is the 4 again. And then once we've gotten the answer for all these, we just deduct it by 1, and we should have our effective interest rate. So how will it look like as an answer? Well, here it is. The effective interest rate equals to 1 plus 0 0.105, which is the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly. And then to the, divide that by 4. And then whatever answer we get from the brackets, we just raise it to the power of 4, which is the compounding. And then whatever answer we get, we just minus 1. And then it should give us our answer. Again, if it gives you the answer in decimal form, just multiply by 100. It should give you 10.92%. And that is the effective interest rate. So that is the first thing you always do. You're moving from nominal to nominal. And we're given here the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly of 10.5%. So we first needed to calculate the effective interest rate. And what do you notice again? Our effective interest rate is higher than the nominal interest rate of 10.5%. Our effective interest rate is 10.92%, which is higher than that. Now, what do we need to do? We need to now calculate the nominal interest rate compounded monthly. Remember? When you're going from nominal to nominal, we first compute the effective interest rate, which we have just done. And then we calculate back to the required nominal interest rate. What is required? We are asked what is the nominal interest rate compounded monthly. So we bring again the nominal interest rate formula. And there we have it. And now you can calculate your nominal interest rate compounded monthly. So if you want to pause here and try it yourself again, you can do so. So what is the nominal interest rate? When remember the M here is now 12 because we are asked what is the nominal interest rate compounded monthly. If it's monthly, it's 12 months in a year. So the M here is 12 and then times, and then you open your big bracket, one plus the I, what is the I here? The I here is the effective interest rate, just like I explained before, which is the 10.92%. It's the one that you have just calculated. And if I put it in decimal form, I just take 10.92 divided by 100. It's going to give me 0 0.1092. Make sure you put everything. Don't round it off here because it's going to give you a slightly off number or slightly off answer. And then you raise that the power of 1 divided by the M, which is the compounding, which is the 12 again, and then minus 1. And that is how you do it. And what answer does it give us? It gives us an answer of 10.40%. That is the nominal interest rate compounded monthly if you are charged 10.5% compounded quarterly. So we've just answered our question. Always remember to follow those steps I've just mentioned. Now your answer might be 10.41%. You'll be marked correctly. I would be marked correctly too because it's a slight rounding off difference. Remember, it can be a huge difference. I hope you now know how to calculate the nominal interest rate and how to calculate the nominal interest rate when you're given the effective interest rate as well as when you're given an, a nominal interest rate with different compounding. I hope you'll just follow the steps and you should be able to do it on your own. I hope you have gained value from this lesson and if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.